the photoelectric effect was a major discovery. It was found that electrons could be ejected from the surface of a metal upon exposure to electromagnetic radiation. Further, it was shown that no electrons were ejected unless the radiation had a frequency above some certain minimum threshold value. Then once that minimum energy was achieved, the electrons were ejected immediately, however low the intensity. Further, the kinetic energy of the electrons increased linearly with a frequency of, inter of incident radiation. This experiment was interpreted uh, as the, the energy, the radiation source was delivering packets of energy that were called photons. And if the photons had enough energy that was at least the minimum energy of the electrons, then the electron would be ejected from the surface of the metal. But if the photon did not have enough energy, it didn't matter how long they shone the light or with what intensity, the electron would not be ejected. This minimum threshold energy is also oftentimes re referred to as the work function, which is the energy required to remove an electron from the surface of a metal. It's the threshold frequency. Also, electrons can be driven out of the metal only if it receives at least that certain minimum energy, the threshold frequency, or also called the work function. The kinetic energy of the electrons increases with the frequency of the incident radiation. So on an energy level diagram, you can see that the energy brought by the photon in terms of uh, quantified as h nu um, is equal to the sum of the energy needed to remove the electron or the work function plus the kinetic energy of the electron. So whatever extra energy beyond the work function, that energy is carried away as the kinetic energy of the electron. And so we have this handy quant quantitative uh, relationship that the kinetic energy of the ejected electron equals the energy of the incident photon minus the work function, the amount of energy it takes to release the electron. Or also you can relate the velocity of the electron to the energy of the photon minus the work function. Let's take a look at an example using this idea of the photoelectric effect. In this case, we know that it takes 208.4 kilojoules of energy to remove one mole of electrons from the atoms on the surface of rubidium metal. If rubidium metal is irradiated with 254 nanometers of light, which is in the ultraviolet region, what is the maximum kinetic energy the released electrons can have? Okay, so we have the situation where it says it takes 208.4 kilojoules of energy to remove. So in this case, the amount of energy required to remove the electrons or the work function is equal to 208.4 kilojoules per mole of electrons. And it says the incident radiation, 54 nanometers, so that's the wavelength here is 254 nanometers, that's in the ultraviolet region. So what's the maximum kinetic energy that can be released? Okay, so the kinetic energy is going to be the energy of the electrons that are released off this metal. All right, so the relationship is that the kinetic energy of the electron is going to equal the um, incident rate, uh, energy minus the work function. And that would be, we'll call the threshold frequency. So we'll use... First, let's calculate this. Uh, in this case, the work function is uh, given to us, so we don't know what the threshold frequency is. We don't necessarily need to know it because we're given the work function. All right, we're trying to calculate the kinetic energy of the electrons, and um, we're given the incident radiation. So we, we're going to be able to calculate the energy here. We're given this energy so that we can calculate the kinetic energy. Now the thing is though, the energy, the incident radiation, let's calculate that value right now. So that is going to be E for the incident radiation is going to equal H nu. 
We're given the uh, information about the photons in terms of the wavelength, and so we need to recall that the wavelength times the frequency is equal to the speed of light. So we can calculate the energy of the incident radiation. It's going to be H Planck's constant times, um, let me see, nu equals C over lambda. All right, and so Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. All right. The speed of light is a fundamental constant. It's 2.99 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All right. Oh, sorry. Meters per second. All right. So my unit analysis is telling me my seconds are going to cancel. We left in units of joules um, after I divide by the wavelength, but it needs to be in meters. And it's given to me in nanometers, so that's 254 times 10 to the minus ninth meters. Okay, so I can do that calculation. And it's going to give me, um, let's see, oh, 7 point, I should really leave all these numbers in my calculator, but I'm going to write them down here for you. 7.7999 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Okay, so I have my energy right here. I have the work function, and I should just be able to subtract the work function, but the work function is um, per mole of electrons. And what I've just calculated here is the energy of one photon. And one photon will eject one electron, so I need to express my um, work function here in terms of individual uh, um, per electron, not per mole of electrons. So if it was 200, let me, let me convert that right here, I'm going to convert that right here, 208.4 kilojoules of energy per one mole of electrons, and I know one mole of electrons is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd electrons, that's Avogadro's number, so I can convert that and that is going to be um, in units of kilojoules, which is going to be, let's see, 3.46179 times 10 to the negative 22nd kilojoules per electron now. Okay, so if I want to calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected electron is going to be the energy of the incident radiation, which is 7.9999 times 10 to the negative 19th joules minus the work function or the threshold um, energy. Now, when I calculate this is in kilojoules, I need to express this in joules because I, if I'm going to subtract two numbers, they have to be in the same units. So I just need to multiply by 1,000 to get that into joules. So that's going to be 3.46179 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And so the kinetic energy then of the ejected electron is going to be equal to about 4.53 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. That's a tiny little bit of energy, but it's just for one electron. If you wanted to calculate the kinetic energy for a mole of electrons, you just multiply that number back by um, Avogadro's number.